operating industry executive said that competitive pressures, financial awards, and poor internal controls led analysts to give high ratings to risky investments. Members of the Senate Governmental Affairs Subcommittee are investigating the causes of the 2008 financial crisis. We'll hear from former and current employees from Moody's Investors Service and Standard & Poor's, two of the largest credit rating agencies. This is six hours. Good morning, everybody. Today's hearing is the third in a series of subcommittee hearings focusing on some of the causes and consequences of the 2008 financial crisis, a man-made economic assault on our country that is still foreclosing on homes, shuttering businesses, and driving unemployment. We saw the beginning of the assault in our first two hearings, which examined how U.S. financial institutions turned to high-risk lending more, uh, strategies to earn quick profits, dumping hundreds of billions of dollars in toxic mortgages into the financial system like polluters, dumping poison upstream in a river. At the second hearing, we showed how regulators saw what was going on, understood the risk, but sat on their hands or fought each other rather than stand up to the banks which were profiting from the solution, from the pollution, excuse me. Those toxic mortgages were scooped up by Wall Street firms that bottled them in complex financial instruments and turned to the credit rating agencies to get a label declaring them to be safe, low-risk investment-grade securities. Today, we are focusing on the role played by the credit rating agencies. Next week, we will look at the last stage of the economic assault, when Wall Street investment bankers magnified and spread the risk posed by toxic mortgages through the use of complex structured finance transactions. For 100 years, Main Street investors trusted U.S. credit rating agencies to guide them towards safe investments. Even sophisticated investors like pension funds, municipalities, insurance companies, and university endowments have relied on credit ratings to protect them from Wall Street excesses and distinguish between safe and risky investments. But now that trust has been broken. We used as case histories the two biggest credit rating agencies in the United States, Moody's and Standard & Poor's, and the ratings that they gave to the key financial instruments that fueled the financial crisis. Residential mortgage-backed securities, or RMBSs, and collateralized debt obligations, or CDOs. The subcommittee investigation found that those credit rating agencies allowed Wall Street to impact their analysis, their independence, and their reputation for reliability. And they did it for the money. This chart, Exhibit 1G, shows that from 2002 to 2007, the three top credit rating agencies doubled their revenues from less than $3 billion to over $6 billion per year. Most of this increase came from rating complex financial instruments. According to Standard & Poor's, between 2000 and 2006, investment banks underwrote nearly $2 trillion in mortgage-backed securities, $435 billion, or 36 percent of which were backed by subprime mortgages. All of those securities needed ratings. Moody's and S&P each rated about 10,000 RMBS securities over the course of 2006 and 2007.